Hello, everybody. My name is Pascal Johanalahi at the Posi Supercomputing Center, and today I'll be introducing uh, you to the Acacia Object Storage uh, Service and object storage in general. So the focus of this video is to understand object storage, right? To try to understand the definitions of object storage bucket and objects and compare and contrast object storage to file systems. We'll, we'll also discuss the benefits of using object storage and introduce you to Acacia, our new object storage system, in which you, you can see in the screenshot, the back plane of Acacia, which has got high speed connections to uh, Citonix and other POSI infrastructure. So introduction to file systems, all right? So a file system is a way of grouping and storing files that is hierarchical. People are very familiar with this, right? You have this idea of filing cabinets with folders and files, and then those folders can have folders and those folders can have folders uh, and files, et cetera. And this translates to sort of a tree, all right, of file systems and directories, right? You can organize uh, the files into these directories or folders. And it's a nice visual way of grouping things together for access. Uh, and the file systems, right, the key thing is that they have this organization, but you can interactively perform actions on the files, right, i.e. edit them. You can move and edit them, uh, and they're right where they would be in the file system, and uh, it's very easy to edit and move files around. Palsy uses file systems to store data used on Citonix, right, in supercomputing resources. These would be, you know, Scratch, Software, and Home, which are sort of standard file systems that you're quite familiar with. And in a file system, right, a file has associated with metadata, which is usually the file name, timestamp, its location, the folder hierarchy, other file attributes. Uh, and you can actually use this metadata to search for files, right? So file name searches are, are you know, searching for a file with a particular file name is very uh, common. Uh, but it's essentially metadata. Um, and the directory is a hierarchical approach to this type of management. It allows you to uh, move and organize stuff, and it can be quite deep. So the hierarchy that you establish is arbitrary, uh, and it can be as shallow as deep as you want, one level, two levels, et cetera. An example here is multiple levels where file folders uh, or directories contain subdirectories and also files which then contain subdirectories, et cetera. All right? the, the, the directories contain subdirectories which can contain subdirectories. So this is what we're generally familiar with. I think for the most part, people don't go with very, very deep uh, directory structure, but you can, of course, go very, very deep if you'd like. Now, object storage, right? Introduction to object storage. This is a, a little bit different. Simply stated, object storage is a way of grouping and storing files that is flat. So there's not a hierarchy to it. Object storage is a collection of unique objects that you cannot interact with them. And so it's not interactively performing actions such as editing them into the object storage. You have to remove them from the object storage to do so. And you organize them into buckets uh, using uh, and placing these objects in those buckets. Uh, and it can view it as an aid for the organization. Now the buckets and objects here are color coded. Green objects go into green buckets, and you know objects in orange into the orange bucket. But they're not grouped internally in any sort of particular fashion. Objects exist in the on the storage space and have associated access points uh, in terms of storage and buckets. So you would access for accessing the orange objects. You access the orange bucket that gives you then a flat view, essentially of all the objects. They're all objects inside this bucket. Uh, now, policy uses an object storage called Acacia uh, and with interactions with systems like Citonix. Now, uh, the critical difference between uh, object storage and file systems in terms of user experience is that uh, object storage does not allow interactively changing objects, right? You must first retrieve it from the storage, and once you're done manipulating the data, put it back. Since every object uh, uh, is kind of in this flat hierarchy, they must have a globally unique identifier key, which will know exactly where the object is when you're getting it. If you do not know the key, you can search for this using metadata searches. You can also help organize your objects by using buckets, right? Buckets are organizational for references only. Uh, and all objects, including buckets, are all simply stored equally in the as data objects. Uh, and you can have sub buckets. So a bucket is the high, the, the most organization you can have, and then everything else is an object inside that bug bucket. There's no hierarchy. An object has associated with uh, three things: so content or the data. Um, uh, this is often a file or an image, or it can be anything else, right? That's the data that's inside this object. But it also has metadata, and this metadata contains information about the data when it's helping you search. So you can actually have more than just it, it, you know, the equivalent of an object name and a file name, you can have a lot more information in the metadata. 
uh, that specifies you know, when it was created, but also maybe who it was created by. Other extra information can be part of the metadata. Uh, the identifier is globally unique. So uh, that means that you, you cannot have all, you cannot have an object that has, let's say a bucket that would be test. If someone else has a bucket that's test and you wanted to create test test.txt and someone else had test as a bucket and also it's a .txt, that's not a globally unique name. And it would uh, object sources would complain about that. It has to be a globally unique name. Uh, an object's metadata is stored separate from an object. So that allows access to the metadata without having to retrieve the object in its entirety. So let's compare the file systems and object storage, right, via analogy. So the idea of a file system is you have a filing cabinet, right? You can locate, copy, and edit, remove files from the filing cabinet rather uh, quickly. The filing cabinet is easily accessible to you and your colleagues, uh, but might be difficult to access for people outside the office. Uh, and a filing cabinet can only hold a limited number of files before you fill out the filing cabinet. And it's hard to keep search of or you know track the files themselves. Uh, you can, of course, use some naming convention in, let's say, files and folders, but that still is not, a, a, let's say, a quickly searchable path for very complex, very deep filing cabinets or uh, file systems. The bank vault is more like the object storage. Once you deposit an object in the vault, you cannot do anything with it until you take it out of the vault. Anyone, anywhere can access the bank vault if they have the right authorization and key. Uh, and the vault is shared with all other bank customers, so object, uh, objects need to have unique names. Uh, the vault can hold lots of objects and can be readily expanded to make the vault bigger. Um, but caveats is, of course, you have unique names and you want stuff to be managed. Notes about objects can be easily created when you deposit the object and you can search those notes, right? So without having to retrieve the object itself, rather than actually having to pull the file system saying, when are you, uh, like, what is the file? What is some information about the file? You can just ask some metadata searches. So that's the main difference. Let's get a review so we can really capture this difference. Uh, so file systems store data in files. That uh, seems quite reasonable. It allows you to make changes of to file in place within the file system, and typically has fixed, fixed attributes in terms of the total set. So you know where it lives in folders, uh, file so the full file name uh, and timestamps and so on. Uh, you can manage the data with a file hierarchy, where each file has a unique identifier in the lowest level of the hierarchy. Right. So if you have test and test.txt, and then you have a, so a folder called test and you have txt, text, uh, test dot test dot txt. And then in that test folder, you also then create and construct another subfolder called test. It can also contain a file called te test.txt, right? Because it's in a subfolder. This is best suited for simplified access and management of shared files. And it's, uh, you know, for kind of maintaining a single accurate updated version of a file. If you have multiple file versions, it's a bit trickier. Right, other version control systems kind of provide that rather than the file system itself, and you have upper limits to for the inspect, uh, expansion. So it kind of puts a cap on the uh, scalability of a file system. Object storage uh, has objects that contain data, but they can also contain more far more complex metadata. You, you're not allowed to change objects; they're immutable. So you have to retrieve the object, put it in a file system, edit it, and then you can put it back. Uh, you can support custom metadata. So it's not like a specific convention you have to follow. You can have metadata for an object in a bucket that can make easier for the searches that people do for those objects and buckets for retrieval. So picking out the objects you actually want. And the data management is flat, right? So uh, the, the repository is flat. There's no hierarchy. And so each object has to have a globally unique identifier. Uh, and it's best suited for retaining massive amounts of unstructured data and is ill-suited for frequently changing transactional data. So if you have small files that you're constantly updating and moving around, object storage is not suited to that. That's where file systems can work reasonably well. Um, but if you have large objects that are kind of archives, then that's a great place to uh, store those archives for longer term. Now, a quick introduction to Acacia. So Acacia is uh, the central object storage system uh, for POSI, right? It provides uh, the main hub for large amounts of storage and is uh, connected to all POSI services. You can use it with Satonix, with Nimbus, uh, and also the Banksia store tape system, which is, if you will, colder storage than Acacia, uh, and is actually accessible from not just inside POSI, but from the outside world as well. You have to have the appropriate access, but you can access it from the outside world. Uh, Acacia allows for um, about a thousand buckets per user and up to a million objects per bucket. And this is principally for performance regions. 
uh, reasons, right? We want to minimize it also just for managing your own uh, sort of scope of what you want to try to manage. If you have more than a thousand buckets, like it's a bit complicated. And if you have a more than a million objects, performance can be hit as you're searching stuff. And the idea would be trying to make sure some metadata to search stuff. And remember that global unique name. So users are given about uh, are given 100 gigabytes of vacation storage by default. They can ask for more, but uh, typically the most of the storage is granted through uh, expansion of projects uh, storage. Initially, there's te one terabyte of storage, but that can be expanded with requests for tickets. A user interacts uh, with this Acacia storage and object storage using S3 clients, which we'll, we'll discuss in the next video. Just remember that we have this object storage and it is different from a file system and it has not the same type of access as a file system and objects are constant rather and immutable rather than quickly mutable. Thank you. Have a good day.